Hello and welcome back to another lecture on phonetics. In our last lecture, we said that we can distinguish consonants based on three different factors. The first one we discussed in the last lecture was whether the sound is voiced or voiceless. The second one we will discuss in this class is called the place of articulation. In the lecture after this one, we will talk about the manner of articulation. Stay tuned. Now please keep in mind that we're only talking about the English sounds here. So we're not going to cover all of the different sound types. But moving along, as the air proceeds up through your pharynx, it can get modified by your epiglottis right here in this area. If that occurs, or that is the main place of articulation, or the main place where you are able to produce the sound, then such sound will be called a glottal sound and all other sounds not produced through this mechanism are not glottal. The only two glottal sounds that we have in the English language is the H huh sound as in hat and the what we call the glottal stop as in uh-oh. So it's that first sound uh, uh, which is produced in this area. Great. So let's continue now. Now the air can keep moving all the way up. Again, recall, it can either choose the path of going through the nasal cavity or the oral cavity. Let's stick with the oral cavity for now. As the air moves up, it could be modified by your velum or your soft palates somewhere around this area. If that's the case, then you produce a velar sound and all other sounds are not velar. Examples of velar sounds in English, or the only velar sounds, is the k, the g, and the ing. An example of k was as in cat or kite, g as in go, and ing as in sing. Okay, so great, we just discussed that sounds could also be modified under the velum, or this area. But what modifies the sound right here? What modifies the air passing through here? Well, that would be the tongue, of course. The back of the tongue would raise up to constrict the airflow that is moving uh, out through your pharynx. And the location where this happened is at the velum or the soft palate. And this is why we call the k, g, and ing velar sounds. So let's just stop and recap for now. We said that sounds could be modified at the epiglottis and be called glottal sounds. Sounds can also be modified at the velum or the soft palate and they can be called velar sounds. Now notice that we're saying at the epiglottis and at the velum, meaning we're talking about locations, we're talking about places. Recall that when we talked here about voiced and voiceless sounds, the difference was not in location but in whether there was a vibration or not. So whether there's vibration or not is one way to distinguish sounds. Whether they happen in one place or the other is a second way to distinguish between sounds. This second way to distinguish between sounds is through the use of or, or referring to its place of articulation. So let's go back and finish the rest of the places of articulation. As a reminder, so far, according to our first method of distinguishing sounds, a sound can either have vibration and be called a voiced sound or plus voice, or there can be no vibration and therefore be a minus voice or voiceless sound. The places of articulation we talked about so far were sounds that were modified at the glottis, and so we called those glottal sounds. Two examples we had was the h huh and the glottal stop. We also look at sounds modified at the soft palate or the velum and we call those sounds velar sounds and there were three examples the k, the g, and the ing. Before we move on, not notice that we have to actually mix between all three features in order to be able to distinguish these sounds. So what distinguishes k from g? Both sounds are consonants. Both sounds are produced at the velum. One distinction is that k is minus voice. G 
is plus voice. How do we know? Well, it's difficult to produce k without producing a vowel along with it. You still might feel vibration when you say k, but that's only the vibration coming from the vowel. If there is a way that you can produce the sound alone and the g sound alone, then you can feel that this one has vibration, whereas the k does not involve any vibration. So anyway, there are no more subclassifications when it comes to voice. You're either plus voice or minus voice. But we still haven't finished with all the places of articulation. So let's go back and see what we have. Okay, so let's continue with our airflow here. Now we have sounds that can be modified in the palatal region, or the hard palate. In English, there is only one such sound, and that is the y sound. As in, yes, or yellow. This sound is voiced. So, so far we can describe the y sound as being plus voiced, or plus voice, and that it is palatal, meaning that it occurs, or happens, or is articulated at the hard palate. And notice this area right here is called the alveolar ridge. The alveolar ridge is this rugged part of the top of your mouth. You can actually feel it with your tongue, where it's a bit uneven, kind of feels rocky. There are some sounds that are produced between the hard palate and the alveolar ridge. So right about here, in this area, in between. These sounds are referred to as alveo-palatal sounds. Alveo being part alveolar and palatal being part at the hard palate. Great, so the sounds produced in between the alveolar ridge and the hard palate or at the alveo-palatal area are four sounds. The sh, the z, sh, as in ship, okay and j as in leisure. Two more sounds are produced at the alveopalatal area. And that is the ch sound as in chip and the j sound as in judge. So now as the air continues to move on, it can be modified exactly at the alveolar ridge. Again, the alveolar ridge is the area right behind your upper teeth. Sounds produced in this area are called alveolar sounds because they are produced at the alveolar ridge. The alveolar sounds in English include the t, d, the s, the z, the n, the l sound, and the rotorized or retroflex American R. All right, so now if you can see here, these are the top teeth and these are the bottom teeth. As the air passes through here, Sometimes we can extend our tongue, okay, and place it right here in between the teeth. If that is the case, then we have sounds that are produced between the teeth. And another word for that is interdental, okay? So the only English sounds that are produced between the teeth and are so-called interdental is the th sound, as in think, and the th sound as in this. Now sometimes we can use our bottom lip and our top teeth and put them together to constrict the airflow. And in this case we come up with sounds that we call labio from lips dental. The only labio dental sounds we have in English is the f and the v sound. The last place where the air can be modified is between both lips. These sounds are called bilabial sounds. Bilabial sounds in English are p, b, m, and the ones where the lips are rounded to produce them, like w and w, or the inverted w. So now we're done with all of the places of articulation. <music>